Good morning, folks. We've got eye-catching solar features here in ionized helium, sunspot groups, and plasma filaments dancing in the corona. They are quiet, though, as we come to spaceweathernews.com and see the entirety of the key heliographic latitudes here in ionized iron. Solar flaring remains low as the sunspots have failed to gear up magnetically, dark coronal hole departing, and incoming. We'll continue to monitor the incoming sunspots and plasma filaments for eruptive behavior. There is space weather back at Earth, though, already as the coronal hole stream that began arriving yesterday took a strong intensification a few hours later in the day and has created some enduring geomagnetic instability as we enter today. Most likely effect is nice auroral activity near the polar region. The solar wind from the next coronal hole on the left is still approximately five days away, but its interplanetary magnetic fields will begin interacting with Earth considerably earlier, perhaps as early as tomorrow night. Let's go next to the lithosphere, where volcanoes are the story as Michael Volcano put up a smoke column and has begun dusting the snowy slopes with ash. Meanwhile, the showstopper was in Mexico, Popo, teaching its master class on why you shouldn't go hiking on active volcanoes. The entire mountain surface became littered with incandescence and debris from above. Folks, this next double-edged sword immediately jumps into the list of top animations online, especially because the cosmic anatomy lesson excludes dark matter in favor of the plasma pervading the universe. Amazing work by Georgia Tech here. However, their counterparts on the project at NASA became focused on a narrow region during one portion of the computer simulation, where it appears that the active plasma nuclei, known in mainstream science as black holes, have given away some of their formation secrets. The problem is that this is a visualization simulation based on our assumptions, guesses, and models and constants like the Hubble constant and microwave background, which we know conflict with one another, and as amazing a job as Georgia Tech did here. We have a big claim from NASA that is once again based on a model. You remember the last time they claimed to gain revolutionary insight like that, right? It was this, when they modeled two black holes coming together and took away bajillions of mounds of information. The problem is that the most critical portion of the entire scenario, where the electric and magnetic forces are interacting the most, is completely left out of the analysis. They just pretended as though that space did not exist and was not really there. This, just like today's story about the simulation, is not how one gains meaningful information about the cosmos. That is done through actual observation. Moving on to the Great Electric Comet, solar wind charge exchange is the most critical aspect to the observable characteristics of comets we can study in the solar system. This is a great paper linked below and contains a nice little graphic and explanations of the conditions in the coma. This is glycolonitrile. It helps form the amino acid glycine and is made from formaldehyde and hydrogen cyanide, which means that those compounds must also exist in the interstellar medium where glycolonitrile was just recently found for the first time. Rounding out the top news is yet another electroquake paper out of Greece. These folks are crushing it in this area. Huge lead time discovered in the build-up activity in the pre-seismic electric process, and I do bet that this is the first country to have a national organization publicly predict a major quake. Speaking of which, the winter uptick has now been fully analyzed. After only one seven-pointer in October, and having had none in 2019 so far, we had a flurry in December, and veteran observers, as was forecast on Fly on the Wall, the peak event of 7.5 occurred just two days away from the polarity reversal of the solar polar fields. We also confirmed that the August 8-pointer struck the positive peak of the year, and in a video coming out later tonight right here on YouTube, we'll give more analysis and our forecast for the next great uptick on our planet. Could be as little as a month away. Folks, we are running up on the final registration days here. Last numbers getting submitted to the venue for planning purposes here next week, so if you're coming, you better make sure. Electric Universe, Solar Micronova, Earthquakes, Climate Change, and more. otf.cells.com to register, observatoryproject.com for more information. Today begins the last week of registration. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.